This is BBC News, the headlines. The final battle, Kurdish fighters in northeastern Syria launched a major assault against what remains of the Islamic State group. Seven extremists are sentenced to life in prison in Tunisia over attacks that killed dozens of people in 2015. Now, the head of NASA says they plan to send humans to the moon again, but that this time they'll stay there. The space agency will start with an orbiting lunar outpost designed to send astronauts to the surface and then build a more permanent structure on the moon. Well, let's uh, get more about uh, all of this. We're joined by Dr. Ken Kramer. He's a space uh, journalist. Thank you very much for your time. So NASA wants to go back to the moon. Can you explain their plan a little bit more? Sure. Thanks for having me. Yes, NASA wants to, uh, it's been 50 years. We want to go back to the moon. We're developing a SLS rocket and the Orion capsule to do that. And we're also developing uh, a mini space station at the moon that, that they will launch to, and that's called the Gateway. We want to launch the first element of the Gateway in 2022. Then we'll send an astronaut to go into lunar orbit around 2023. And then we want to test a human lander in 2024. And then hopefully, if that all works out, we will send the first humans back to the moon in 2024. I, I'm sorry, 2028. And hopefully Europe is going to be part of that because Europe is a big part of the, uh, the Orion capsule program that will carry the humans to the moon. Now, as you say, it's been it, it, almost exactly half a century since the moon landing. Why the sudden interest now in going back? Well, there's been a developing interest. You know, unfortunately, the politicians 50 years ago ended the Apollo program. Uh, both of the Bushes wanted to return to the moon, but the Congress didn't quite agree. Now there seems to be a consensus among many nations, U.S., Europe, Russia, and China, that it's important to go back to the moon. So, so there's been a change in the political mindset about it, and that's, that's what it takes, because we have the technology. What we need to go to the moon is political willpower and the funding, and so that's what seems to be changing now. We've been hearing a lot about uh, China's expedition to the dark side of the moon. Is there a little bit com of competitiveness here with the United States wanting to keep up? Oh, absolutely. And I'm really glad China's pursuing their, their lunar dreams because that is what's going to spur the Western countries into action, I believe. So, uh, and I hope. So, yeah, I'm all for China going to the moon and definitely a little bit of competition is absolutely good. Hopefully we'll also work with them because if we can work together uh, as humanity it'll cut the cost down and we can use the resources from each country uh, to, to land there and probably send an international crew when we do land on the moon. It's a pretty extraordinary idea that people might actually be living on the moon. It's stuff we've read about and seen in science fiction. Just briefly, what is it going to look like? Well, it would look a lot like uh, Antarctica research station, you know, which the 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 U the Europe is in, is involved in. So everybody has Antarctic research stations, and that's pretty much the model that we're hoping to build. And that again, with international resources, would cut the cost down, and it would also make for a bigger station. So we would we would set that down on the moon, perhaps near the South Pole, where there's a lot of a lot of water, and you can then live off the land, so to speak mine the water that we know is in those craters that'll give us hydrogen and oxygen so you can breathe the oxygen and you can use the hydrogen and oxygen also to create rocket fuel so uh, international international uh, participation like antarctica really would be an ideal way to go well science fiction coming true dr ken kramer space journalist thank you so much uh, thanks for having me